Hey, if you guys want to know what this is, this is just the uh, sunlight going through the window and hitting my shirt. Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome to Draw 2. My name is Ramney, and today we are going to be talking about the Guardians of the Galaxy trailer number two and the Spider-Man Homecoming trailer. Phase three of MCU is slowly growing, and I am very excited to see what happens next. They started off big with the release of Doctor Strange, and now they're gearing up for more back-to-back -back amazing stuff with Guardians of the Galaxy and Spider-Man Homecoming, two movies with trailers that were just recently released in the past couple of days, most recently Spider-Man Homecoming. But I never got a chance to talk about the Guardians of the Galaxy trailer, so let's talk about that. Right off the bat, this movie sets the exact same tone that the first movie did. It's dark, it's funny, it's witty, and the characters are just characters that you easily fall in love with. In the original movie, Drax became my favorite character by the end of the movie, and in this one, the bit at the end of this trailer was just so funny. Every time I watch that part, I just literally start laughing. Now, this movie doesn't really talk about who the main bad guy is going to be. Now, I believe the director for this movie has talked about how he's not going to be chasing any Infinity Stones in this movie. So even with two trailers, all Already out we still don't know what the main plot is we still haven't seen Kurt Russell as ego the living planet but we do finally get a chance to see Mantis the new member of Guardians of the Galaxy who has a pretty interesting superpower like I said in my trailer review for the first Guardians of the Galaxy volume 2 trailer I love the idea of Rocket and Groot switching roles and now Groot is on the shoulder of Rocket and you can kind of see Rocket take on a little bit of a fatherly figure for Groot He's trying to teach him how not to press that button that blows everybody up. That is so funny. That one scene definitely put a smile to my face. Groot, as a baby, is so unassuming and he's got those cute little eyes. But then he goes savage on one of the Ravagers, I believe he was, later on in the movie. It's just so funny. Here, you don't really see much of Gamora. You don't really see much of Nebula. And even Star-Lord didn't really have that much to talk about in this trailer. And there's really nothing, like I said, nothing that talks about what the plot is going to be other than hints here and there and some scary monsters and some other like bad guys that we see. They're those bad guys that get blown up somehow and then they fly in the air and then they get sucked back down. And then there's that gooey, ugly, pink alien that looks like he swallowed Drax and you see Drax all trying to like hack his way out of it. That one's hilarious. I can't help but smile when I think of the trailer. It's so funny. And then, okay, let's talk about the last part when Mantis reveals, kind of puts Star-Lord on the spot, calling him out for having feelings for Gamora. I mean, as if that wasn't obvious already in the original movie. Here, I love Drax's reaction to it. I think it is such an extreme reaction coming from such a solemn, sad, like angry dude. And just him cracking up so loud is just so funny. Well, and then, and then he goes, do me, do me, do me right afterwards. I cannot wait to see how that scene plays out with Drax's emotions. You guys, I didn't need this trailer to be excited for Guardians of the Galaxy. I love that this trailer came out though. I'm very excited for it and I cannot wait until next year. It's gonna be a fun time, hopefully just as good, if not better than the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. I cannot wait, you guys. Now you guys, let's talk about the Spider-Man Homecoming trailers. There's two trailers that came out. There's a North American trailer and there's an international trailer. So I'm gonna talk about those two. Now the North American trailer has Peter Parker. We see more of him in high school and his relationship with his classmates. There's them looking at Liz Allen, which is the new love interest. That's awesome because Peter Parker has had many of interest so we don't always need to see Mary Jane we don't always need to see Gwen Stacy there are other people in Spider-Man's life now they're staring at Liz Allen for way too long in the cafeteria and then there's this girl right beside him and his friend Ned Leeds uh, saying that they're weird. I thought that was really funny because that's kind of something that I relate to in high school. In high school, I was definitely that nerdy Asian friend. I was definitely that guy that Spider-Man's buddies with. Here we also get a chance to see Tony Stark sort of acting as a mentor to Spider-Man, which is a far different story than the Sam Raimi Spider-Man or the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies. Obviously, you couldn't do Iron Man in any of those, but here you kind of see the mantle being passed on from Tony Stark, who's sort of slowly going to, into retirement as Iron Man and passing the mantle onto Spider-Man, kind of, to be the next big superhero for Phase 3 and future MCU films. We all know that Robert Downey Jr.'s contracts are almost up, so who knows how many more movies he'll be doing in the MCU. So this is kind of like a baton passing, which is really cool. There's that funny bit in the car where Peter thought that Tony was giving him a hug, but he's actually just opening the door for him, which is so nice of Tony to do. And then there's that quick scene at the end where both Iron Man and Spider-Man are swinging and flying through the city, uh, which we presume is Queens. And speaking of locations, you guys notice there's quite a bit of locations. If I'm not mistaken, Washington DC is one of them. 
New York is definitely one of them. And then there's that one scene in a cruise ship where Spider-Man's sort of trying to hold the ship together in place like that. For a high school kid who, like in the Civil War movie, he couldn't even leave Queens because he had homework. Spider-Man in this movie is pretty well traveled, so I'm looking forward to seeing what that is all about. In the teaser for the teaser trailer, he gets an upgrade from Tony Stark. He gets this briefcase that we presume Happy Hogan handed him, and he opens it up and he gets the web those web wings are they even called web wings i'm not sure but he gets those which is a really cool upgrade and if you guys are not familiar with the original spider-man comics he did have those webs in the armpit area but i don't think they really acted as anything more than just decoration i don't think he used them for gliding i believe spider-man 2099 had those web wings web armpits and he used them to sort of glide from building to building but not the original spider-man i don't think he used it for that so this is kind of cool to see i'm looking forward to seeing what this thing is going to do for spider-man so it's entirely new abilities so that's cool i'm really excited for that another really cool bit is how he quickly just presses a button and then his whole costume just comes apart i mean if you if you look at andrew garfield or toby Maguire's costumes it looks like something that would take forever to put on but this one it sort of explains just in that one scene just logistics on how uh, peter parker puts on the spider-man costume which doesn't seem like it's uh that hard to do to be honest between the three movies i would probably rank this costume as my second favorite tom holland did a really good job in civil war you could kind of tell that his costume is cgi in civil war i still like andrew garfield's from the amazing spider-man 2 the most i think that is the one that most looks like spider-man from the comics here in this trailer you get to see the vulture and in the international trailer you get to see a little bit of the shocker that's two villains in this spider-man movie i'm kind of wary about that because the movies where spider-man fought more than one villain that's spider-man 3 and the amazing spider-man 2 i wasn't that big of a fan of so i just don't want spider-man to be dealing with too many villains that the villains don't get their own screen time i mean if you get too many villains you have to divide attention to each of them and then they don't get fleshed out and it's just not that good of a story case in point venom from spider-man 3 venom is an amazing character but spider-man 3 did not do venom justice and i know in the comics spider-man has such a wide array of bad guys that i mean we should all be excited that we get to see those bad guys appear in the screen but too many bad guys i believe really does spoil the pot however it is marvel and marvel as you guys know they know what they're doing so i'm fairly confident that this is going to pay off i mean i really hope it does the vulture costume design kind of does remind me of falcons my favorite part is when he's swooping down from above and then the jet engines from the wings sort of just like they flip and then it starts to look like a bird of prey like it looks like an owl or a falcon just like swooping down with angry eyes at you that's an amazing piece of iconography right there we don't really get to see shocker at this point as well so that's going to be interesting as well but hey michael keaton batman himself birdman plays another type of birdman michael keaton is an amazing actor and i cannot wait to see what he does with the vulture character overall you guys i like these two trailers i'm not too blown away by them as far as spider-man movies are concerned i feel like it's the same old we'll just have to see who knows maybe in the next trailer they're going to show a little bit more and i'm super confident that marvel is going to knock this out of the park i mean they better this is the second reboot of spider-man in the past like five years and that's all the time that we have thank you for watching all the way to the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed it and let me know down below or in the google plus community what you guys thought of guardians of the galaxy volume 2 trailer number two and the Spider-Man Homecoming trailers that just came out. If you guys are curious about the equipment that I use to make my videos, I have links to those in the description below. Remember, clicking on those links helps to ensure content creators like myself are supported so that we can continue making good stuff like this for you guys for free. If this is your first time here, I would love to have you guys subscribe. Here in this channel, I show you how to draw your favorite characters in easy to follow, simple step-by-step -step instructions. And on occasion, I do trailer reviews just like this. So if you guys do like what you see, please hit that subscribe button below this video. And also it would help a great deal if you guys liked this video, commented below or share this with your friends in social media. And speaking of social media, don't forget you guys can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google Plus, and on my website, draw2.com, where you can download the free coloring pages of the tutorials that I have in this channel. Again, you guys, all of the links to those are down in the description below. Finally, thank you once again. And as always, stay tuned for more so you can learn to draw too. I'll see you guys in my next video.